So, I'm making this leather book out of the three core D&D 5th edition manuals. I've got the Player's Handbook, Dungeon Master's Guide, and Monster Manual. And I'm showing off my knife that I'm going to use to mutilate these books. So I start by just slicing the covers off. All of these books are perfect bound, which means they're bound with glue. And I do a lot of the work and in-between steps in this book press that I made. It's just two pieces of plywood with some bolts going through it. Uh, I cut those notches into the spines because when you cut the notches into the spines, they make holes that you can then sew the books together. Uh, that jute cord that I cut there is used to actually bind all three books together. So I take this uh, waxed thread, I have it tied off to a pencil there just so I don't pull it all the way through, and you basically go uh, through the cut that you made with your thread and you make a loop in the back there. See I'm holding the loop open with my hand. You feed the cord through and you tighten it down and you do that several times going up the back of this book and uh, when you do that you basically jump to another part in the book and you go back down and you basically zigzag up and down through this book until all of the cords are attached and the book is attached to the cords at multiple points uh, in the book at multiple pages so at this point I've finished sewing one book to the cords and I need a piece of paper basically to delineate between two books so there's there's the there's the uh, books all sewn together. So now I'm I'm basically tying headbands, and this is uh, kind of my quick and dirty method of making good headbands. Is you take basically a leather cord, and there's a particular way of of stitching a headband where you have these two cords. Uh, you don't have to alternate colors, but I do here. I have red and gold. And so you basically take one cord and you wrap it around the core, the leather core, twice. And you hold it there by just shoving it in the pages. And then you take cord number two, you wrap it around the tail of cord number one, which kind of like tightens cord number one down, and then go around the core twice. And in this case, I'm using the red one to actually stitch into the book, which is how the headboard... Uh, stays in the book. So you see there I'm, I'm taking the red one and I'm going over the gold one, then going around the core, then holding it temporarily. Then I take the gold one, I go around the red one, then around the core once, and then this is twice. Uh, and then you'll see here at the end I'm taking the red one and I'm puncturing through the book in order to... Uh, well then I take it out. But then I go around the gold one and then in into the book in order to secure this leather core headband to the actual top of the book. And that just creates a, a better longevity for the book. Headbands really are so that you can pull the book off the shelf. Uh, the top of the book at the spine is where you get most of the wear and tear when you're pulling books off of a shelf. So that's actually the purpose. Fun fact, that's the purpose of headbands. Uh, basically to make the book last longer uh, when it's being constantly pulled off of a shelf and put back, etc. So, I'm just finishing up the headband here. So now I'm working on the covers. Uh, the cover board is actually, in this case, uh, unlike my black book, which was actually made after this book, uh, here... This is my actual first attempt at this. Um, I'm using pretty thin cardboard, in fact. So, uh, just labeling it so I know which one is going to be which. I actually cut four pieces uh, because I want each cover to have two layers. And the layers are going to have a design cut into them. Um, 
not nearly as intricate as the black book, which again was my second attempt. This was the first attempt, so I went with a simple uh, rectangular border and then some basically some simple shapes uh, to be mounted inside the inside the border. Uh, I'm actually really proud of one of the shapes. I'm going to show you in a second a little trick. It's a it's a pentagon, but I'm going to show you a little trick to making a perfect pentagon inscribed inside a circle of any diameter. Uh, so if you know the maximum dimension that you can fit, you can draw a circle of that size. And then using nothing but the compass you use to draw the circle, you can draw a pentagon that is perfectly inscribed in that circle. So there I am just finishing the, the frame for the first one, and I just use... Uh, the first frame I cut to mark uh, the second frame. Both covers will have a frame. Cutting bookboard is actually extremely hard. Um, it's, you know, a, a it's basically very thick paper, so it's it's essentially like cutting a wood piece where the grain goes all different directions. Uh, so it's actually pretty hard on blade to cut bookboard. It's actually kind of ridiculous. So uh, this is me finding the center of that cutout piece uh, and laying out a diamond, which is the other shape that I'll be doing. Uh, that I'll be having for the the cover. It'll be the front will be a diamond, and the back will be a, a pentagon. And you'll see why in a later video why I chose those shapes. Uh, now I'm laying out a, a basically a crosshair on the cover in order to perfectly center that diamond. So here's here's the pentagon that I'm going to be doing. So I've, I've decided on my radius and I've set my compass to that radius. So the first step is obviously whatever space you have, decide on your circular radius. So I've done that. There's my circle. Now, without moving your compass, go to one of your quadrants and draw two lines like that. Basically radii on the circumference of your line. Futz with the pencil. And then draw that point in between those two radii you point. Now, go to that point that you just drew and readjust your compass so that you go from that point to the next quadrant. And draw that line. Now I know it's strange, but if you draw, if you readjust your compass again, that is now the first point on your pentagon. Go to this that point, draw the second point, draw the third point, fourth point, and you're back at the first point that you drew from. I know that's confusing, like I don't actually know why that works, but I looked it up and that is the way to draw a perfectly inscribed pentagon in a circle. You have to adjust your compass twice using those tricks, but then when you connect the points where your final adjustment crosses your original circle circumference, you'll see you end up with a perfect pentagon every time. And I and you actually you don't need to take any measurements at all for this method. You can just say, "Hey, I'm going to set my compass to an arbitrary circle size and boom, you have a perfect pentagon." It's a really interesting trick for getting a a perfect shape based off of nothing but essentially a compass. And then I set it I cut it out, put a crosshair on it. So I can center it perfectly in the in the back cover and glue it down. The crosshair is great for aligning uh, your shapes. So now the 
boards are dry and I've lined them up with the book block that I've made and drilled holes so that the cords can be fed through from the outside towards the inside. Uh, once the cords are inside you comb them out so that they're able to lay flat and you essentially glue them down on the inside of the cover. Uh, not the outside. We're not, we're not gluing them to the outside. The cords go from the outside to the inner cover get combed open you'll see they're all laid flat there and then when you close the book it tightens it really nicely now I've, I've done that to both sides and I use a little wax paper to basically protect the book block from the moisture of the glue drying at this point I, I move on to the covers and I've taken some glue here and I'm just spreading it just on the spine I'm not covering the whole book at once no, I don't think anybody has enough uh, wherewithal to cover an entire book at once with a leather cover. So I've laid out the size of the glue area on the inside of my leather. This is actually fake leather. I used real leather for the black book, but this one I used some cheap pleather, I think it was. And uh, just lay it out, kind of press it in place with that bone folder. And then I use my book vise which has a series of screws in it on both sides in order to basically tie down and define my book bands which are again the jute cords that I use to stitch all of the book block together it's, it's actually a structural thing in uh, old style binding uh, a lot of people don't realize that like book book bands are decorations now because people don't need them we've we've developed new technologies to attach covers to blocks of text uh, but back in the day they were actually structural and they served a really you know the an important part of book binding was the structural integrity of your book bands so now I'm just using the bone folder to you know press the leather into the details of the covers and it, it it's been a couple days between each one of these steps, but this is me undoing my book vise in order to expose the cover. I use that softer foam in order to make sure that my leather gets pressed into all of the details. So you can see the hexagon or the pentagon there for a split second. But uh, so now I trim the excess leather off of the covers because I'm going to be uh, basically folding it in at a certain point. So just draw a line, use some shears to trim off all that excess. And you can see there the, the glued jute cords glued down. They'll all be covered with, a, with an end sheet here before the end of the video. But for now I'm just getting rid of that excess leather. I really hope the audio isn't actually doing that skipping. It's very annoying. So you see there I have an end sheet. I just folded it down. I have an end sheet glued in to the text block, which is going to cover the inside of the, of the cover leather. So here I am. I've, I've trimmed the covers, and I'm basically cutting it and folding it in so that it kind of keeps the headband that I sewed exposed yet protected from the outside. So it's pleather is not what you should use to bind a book. Believe it or not, I'm actually I'm not a huge fan of this book anymore because it's so I use cheap materials on it, you know, as an exp I didn't have any idea that this was going to work at the time. So I used uh cheap materials and I kind of regret doing that. And which is why I love my black book so much because I use much better materials and it came out much better. But uh, yeah, that's what happens. You shouldn't use pleather to bind a, a book. You should use real leather. Uh, I believe the black book is goat skin, veg tan goat skin leather, which is marvelous. Uh, but regardless, forging ahead, I, I basically just glue down the edges uh, of my trimmed pleather covers there and uh make sure that they're nice and 
all glued down and flat and pressed in. And I, again, I have wax paper to protect my covers, my inside covers, from any glue squeeze out. I really, the whole time I'm doing this, I'm morbidly afraid that I'm going to glue the book shut, basically. <laughs> Which would uh, not be great. You know, it would basically waste the books and I wouldn't be able to repair it. You know, it, modern glue is not something you can easily remove, as far as I'm aware. And so, uh, wax paper is definitely your friend here, keeping your, your text block protected uh, while you're working with all this glue. So, wax paper is your friend in general, man. That stuff is super useful. And it. It damn near doesn't stick to anything. So, wax paper, and then back into the vise. So now I'm actually gluing in the end sheets to the inside of the front cover, which will hide the, the edges of the leather, and it'll hide the jute cord uh, that I use to actually stitch the book together. But basically, you, again, wax paper to protect your text block, you glue both sides and then it's just a black piece of it's actually thick construction paper believe it or not I think I might have stolen it from my daughter um, but yeah you press it in and make sure you really get the paper into the joint because if you don't if you don't get the paper into the joint you end up opening the book and it rips the paper at the spine because it can't stretch basically so this is the completed book block with covers. Uh, I'm going to be having a second video on the decorations that I put onto uh, the covers to make it, you know, look like an actual, like, D&D &D book, like a tome, something you might find in an old library, but I'm just checking for glue squeeze out. So that's the inside cover. And so you just flip a few pages and you're right into the player's handbook. See, I'm looking to see that the paper isn't ripped when you open that book. And there you can see that perfect hexagon for the back cover as well. I think we actually had a little bit of glue squeeze out. Yep, and it kind of botched the inside of the back cover. But, uh... Just making sure I'm not ripping the paper when I open it. But, yeah, there is a little bit of... There must have been, like, a pinhole in that wax paper. And a tiny bit of glue got through. So it, it did mar the, the back inside cover. But I'm not too worried about it. You'll see I actually put those three ribbons in the, the top headband of the book. And that, that was simple. After you finish sewing the headband, you just push some ribbons in between the text block and the headband and you glue it down to the spine and the ribbons stay there so uh, yeah I know it's kinda weird that my black book uh, videos came out before this one but this was my first attempt at making a combined book for D&D &D. Uh, my hope being that eventually all of my D&D &D books would be rebound into, you know, an array of leather tomes that would look, you know, really nice sitting on a shelf and have all sorts of metal corners and ribbon bookmarks and look like authentic uh, books, authentic medieval books uh, bound in that, in that fashion. Historically accurate boundings, except for the pleather, obviously. Not a lot of pleather in medieval times, but yeah, so I'm just appreciating the book. I love doing this kind of stuff. It's like, uh, I almost think that it it's going to turn these things into like an heirloom, kind of. I mean, maybe not really an heirloom, but it's it's good because it, uh, it I think it adds value to it. It's more than just, you know, a, a cardboard you know, cover. Although the cover art in the D&D &D series is great, uh, I think this adds value. So, uh, as the glue dries, it kind of shrinks a little bit, and the cover does 
want to spring open at this point, but we'll get to that another time. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and enjoyed seeing these books getting made, and hopefully you'll tune in for Volume 2 where I put the accoutrement on the covers. I'll see you then.